What's going on everybody, check this out. Uh-huh, and now we are on the overhead cam and then now we are back here. I'm trying out a few new things on this setup I hear. I put a microphone up here so it is no longer in the frame with me and I also have a camera on here which is mounted with one of those mic stands. Still not sure if this is the best solution yet because the camera is mounted onto the table meaning every time I do this it just like shake, uh-oh. All hell just broke loose there. Take two, you can't shake the table. Actually, it's not terrible. How, how bad is that? This is my original Mavic and I love this thing because of how nicely it folds up. I've traveled with it all over the place. It has a long battery life. It's awesome. My biggest complaint was the image quality. It just seemed way too over sharpened. And when I say over sharpened, I mean when a camera is just not that high performance, but then you take like an image that's not that fantastic and then just like sharpen it and sharpen it digitally. It just looks so, so so artificial to me. It looks kind of gross. I also have the Inspire One Pro with the X5 camera. I mean, that thing, whenever you pull it out in front of clients, they're like, whoa. Holy crap, that's legit. But man, that thing was a pain. I hated traveling with that thing. I hated setting it up and breaking it down. And I was not super impressed with the image quality in general, especially when I put it side by side against the Mavic. The coolest part about the Inspire series is what it would go from takeoff mode to flight mode. I mean, that made it all worth it. The Inspire 2 looks awesome, but it's a little bit out of my price range. And by a little bit, I mean by like $6,000. And then of course, there's the Phantom 4 Pro, which Chris Rollins has. I hate that guy and I wish terrible things upon him, but he showed me some of the footage and it looks great. But even just that exercise of the fixed arms and the legs, that made it big enough to where it wasn't convenient enough for me. I do a lot of traveling. I wanna throw this in a backpack, so this is the maximum size I want. So I am really, really hoping that this is gonna be, don't look at my address. Where is my address? So hopefully this Mavic 2 is so awesome that I can sell every flying object that I own and replace it with this. Oh, by the way, I actually paid my own money for this. Oh, don't show my address. Come on, DJI, I'm trying to do an unboxing here. I paid my own money for this, which means I'm allowed to talk as much crap as I want about this. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yeah. Oh, I love how these knobs are removable now. Cables, old remote, new remote. Pretty much the same exact size and everything but I love how you could remove these knobs. These old ones don't come off and every time you try to pack it away nicely, it just like kinda, uh. They have these nicely tucked away right in here, which is awesome. I don't know which camera I'm supposed to show. Now, do I show this one? Do I show this one? I'm not used to this two camera setup. Tellers, charger, and of course some documentation. Do not fly this into people's faces. Do not use this to smuggle drugs into prisons. This charger is a little bit sleeker than the old one, so that's cool. Oh, what? <gasps> Look at that, that is awesome. It's the little things. The remote charger is built into this, opposed to the old one where you had to plug it into the USB here, so you have to have a separate cable for the remote. They do give you an extra set of propellers in the box, so thank you, DJI, I will be needing this. It's a tiny bit taller than the original one, but not much. To get this camera on here, they probably just had to expand it a little bit that way, but it's barely noticeable. So why am I spending the money to upgrade from this to this? Well, three things. One, I'm addicted to new tech and I can't stop spending money. Two, image quality. I was very dissatisfied with the image quality coming out of this. I'm really hoping on the Mavic 2, we're gonna get better actual sharpness. Not artificial sharpening, but actual sharpness out of this camera. I want that better dynamic range, the color, just every aspect of this camera needed improvement. So I'm hoping that this is gonna answer that. And finally, the fact that it has all these sensors. The Mavic only had front-facing sensors but every time you fly this thing reverse or to the side, it can pretty much hit whatever. Trust me, I know this from experience. But on this one, look how many sensors there are. They're all over the place. Is this actually a much better drone or did they just do a really good job in marketing? Like when the Ronin MX came out, it looked so good. I bought one immediately, I got it, and it was terrible. So their marketing team is good, almost a little too good. All right, so I'm gonna start off with a mini test flight just to see how it hovers and handles indoors. I don't recommend flying indoors unless you're an expert like me. So check this out, I got my crash test set up ready. Chris Rollins here, and he's set up here with paper tape. So just in case the sensors don't detect it, it should just cut right through and continue to fly without any damage. Just in case it gets tangled up and decides to do a little dive, it'll land right here on this queen-sized air mattress. I realized to get the most amount of use, I have to take this and fly this straight onto a cement wall, but I paid my own money for this. I'm not ready to lose this guy yet. I'm gonna start off by having it go straight on, and then I'm gonna try again, go one sideways. 
Okay, so, so I'm gonna go sideways now. Oh! Okay, get away from it! Get away from it! Okay. That's his blind spot right there. So as you can see, the obstacle avoidance on the front and back was really good, but there were some blind spots on the sides. Um, excuse me, potato jet. Wait, Chris, is that you? Yeah, listen, the only reason you're able to cut my chin is because side sensors only work in active track and tripod mode. Wait, 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 well, how come they don't just turn on the side sensors all the time so you don't have to worry about going sideways into a tree or something? I'm really not sure, but dude, your apartment's disgusting. Clean it up. All right, so now I got a sheet of plexiglass right here, and I want to know if the Mavic 2 will detect it as an object and avoid it. The answer is no, it does not detect something that's clear, so be careful of windows. So basically what I'm saying is that there are a lot of improvements on the Mavic 2 sensors, but don't go around flying it, assuming you can't hit anything. Know where all the power lines are and obstacles like trees and all that. Cause even with all these sensors, you can still hit stuff. By the way, it's really awesome that you can now adjust the aperture of the camera. Cause before you used to only really be able to adjust the shutter speed. So sometimes you would have to really, really crank up that shutter speed. But now you can adjust your aperture and get that shutter speed generally to where you want it. But the aperture only goes to 11. So if the sun is still right above you, you still will be needing some ND fill filters to balance things out if you want your shutter to be at like 1 50th of a second. I could already see a huge improvement in the quality of footage just from this phone. So I'm so excited for this first test flight. My God, it's looking so good. flight felt really really good very similar and familiar to the mavic one in terms of flight but just the image that comes out of it is so much better just so we have something to compare it to i'm going to take off the original mavic so you guys can see side by side so here we go for take two with the original mavic here we go still looks epic but you know it's just not the same I just lost signal. I lost signal for a little bit at a spot that the Mavic 2 had no issues with. I think they actually improved the signal strength on the Mavic 2 as well, so sweet. All right, so now we're gonna make it nice and dark in here and test out the low light capabilities of these two drones. Ah! All right, so now we're on the original Mavic. This is at 1600 ISO. Pretty much what I'm expecting. It's definitely looking pretty dark and kind of murky. You really start noticing a decrease in quality, even if you're in a shady place during a sunny day. All right, so now we are recording on the Mavic 2 and holy crap, the quality looks so much better. Still at 1600 ISO, but you see way, way more details. The colors look richer, more truer. This one in sensor is really putting in the work right now, so I'm pretty excited about this. This is such an improvement over the original Mavic Pro, so I am excited about this one. So I'm actually gonna bump this ISO all the way up to 6400. I'm gonna see what this looks like. And of course, it still works as a pretty nice gimbal in itself. I mean, I could just hold this thing and just throw it around and it looks pretty good. All right, so after spending an entire day with the Mavic 2 Pro, all I have to say is, 
This is awesome. I'm really excited about the improvements they've made. I'm super happy with how the images are coming out of this thing already. I am gonna be doing a full in-depth review, but that's gonna take me a little bit to make, probably like a week or so. But I'm gonna be testing out all the little functions and features and really get to know this drone. So stay tuned for that. And oh my God, I'm past 10 minutes now. I can end this video. What am I still doing here? All right, I'm out. See you guys later. Thank you.